All right, for our second play of the week nominee, we're going back to that Humboldt game. It is Lance Kuhn who got that handoff. You saw it earlier, finds that opening and just refuses to be taken down. Just runs guys over. Get out of the way. He's taking this one in for the score. Got to tune in to see what uh, what play gets our play of the week later on in the show. Well, we saw a big win for Johnson over Ankeny tonight, so we're going to go ahead and send it back out to Dave Bingham, who's with our Coach of the Week. Back with our Friday Night Blitz Coach of the Week, Brian Woodley. This Woodley family, the Nelson family, so many great families in football, but boy, you've been at it here a while. This is a great moment. Can you really put it into words? It, it's really hard. I mean, it's been 21 years. Uh, we've been to the quarters four times and we fell short. Uh, tonight, our kids found a way. They believed. They fought, and I tell you, that's a heck of a football team they just beat. And uh, I just couldn't be proud for my whole staff, our whole program, uh, taking that leap. This was a big win for our program to get up to the Uni Dome and see what we can do up there. So our, our motto to start the year was start to finish in the Dome. And uh, we stubbed our toe week one in the Dome. Now we have a shot to go back and redeem ourselves. What do you think special? Because obviously this is a very tough, there's two or three schools in this league that you you got to really be tough to beat. What was it about this team that, that put them over the top? i just be honest with you. They're confident because they've worked so hard. We've got talent. we got great coaches. we got good players. And uh, they believed in the system. Uh, you saw it tonight. Everybody con contributing. Had a big catch there at the end by Adrian Broadus that came in for kind of an injured Tatum Fox. And that was a huge play to get it down to the one to get us to a two-score game. But at the end of the day, these kids just keep believing. They're not They're not settling. They want to go win the dang thing. And we got to get there and get a chance to do it now. You always have a foundation in your program of culture, but getting to the dome makes it special now that you got that feeling. How, how are you going to put that into words for me right now? Oh, it's going to be very hard. i got a process <laughs> right now that hasn't sunk in, to be honest with you. I'm just so happy for these kids because, uh, like I said, they've worked hard. It's been a long off season since we got beat last year in the first round, and they just kept grinding. And it's been all winter, spring, summer, into the fall, and they just believe. And we, got, we went through some adversity, and we're gonna, we want to keep this thing rolling. Tribute to you and your staff. We appreciate you. All right, thank you. All right, that's going to do it for the Coach of the Week. Coach Woodley, we'll send it back to you in the studio. <laughs> All right, let's get into some 4A matchups. Carlisle taking on IC Liberty. It's going to be Jess Kersel gets the handoff here, powers his way through for the score. And Carlisle would go back to the run game because it was just working that well. This time it's Jack Laughlin who takes it in for the touchdown. We'll get some more Jess in this one. Run, score, repeat. And between him and Laughlin, the Bolts just had no answer. Carlisle goes on to defeat IC Liberty, Liberty pretty handily, 56 to 28. It looks like the real deal. Indianola at Cedar Rapids Xavier in the downpouring rain. Xavier's Michael Cunningham, the running back, takes the handoff and slips through the tackle probably because of the rain and takes it 61 yards to the house Saints lead 7-0 and you know a punting the snap goes high is fumbled the Indians try and fall on it the balls bouncing around they eventually do fall on it but give Xavier great field position the defense holds them and Kale Christensen knocks in the field goal 10-0 Indianola bouncing back, looking to come back. Matthew Edgington with the powerful run into Xavier territory, pushed out of bounds, and then they go back to him in the red zone. He finishes it himself, touchdown Indians, but Indianola's season falls short and their season comes to an end, 23 to six. All right, let's take a look now at some tweets from tonight's action. Looks like this first one uh, talking about the Class 5A semifinal games that are set. I'm in the way. Oh, we took it full. There we go. Uh, so it's going to be Valley versus Dowling Catholic and Johnson versus Southeast Polk. In all Metro semifinals for 5A, you've got the biggest rivalry in the state with Valley Dowling. You've got the defending champs against <laughs> the Red Hot Johnson Dragons. Quite the storylines there. The Valley Tigers we see knock off Cedar Falls 27-13 in the Dome. Man, that's got to feel good for them because it wasn't just that, that long ago that they were kind of down, you know, they're trying to, you know, suffered some bad losses, but here they are going to the Dome. Back to the semifinals, the Rams, we just saw these highlights. They're also going back. Man, they didn't leave any doubt about it. They're on a mission. Not at all. Dome, sweet dome for the Maroons, a place they know very, very well. We just saw they're going to be taking on Johnston in a huge semifinal game. 
In vinyl, Harlan, 55. Nevada, 7. Wow. Uh, Nevada, we've seen a lot on the show. Really good team, but Harlan is just a machine. The defending 3A champs are going back to the dome. Yeah, and I believe if I saw it right, I think they're going to face ADM. So we get a rematch where the, they kind of blew the doors off that of was, ADM last time. That was, was one of our game of the weeks earlier this year. Exactly. So will things be different this time around? I don't know. Stakes are higher, so could be anybody's game. But we're going to take a quick break, but we will check in with Van Meter as they look to make it back to the dome and continue their state title defense.